Hi, my friends. We have been discussing the the most intelligent way of using the scarcest and the most valuable resource called time. From 1986, for the last nearly 33 years, I have been discussing on this amazing area. If you take the life history of any successful person in whichever field, the common denominator is always how that person uses time. We are all created equally, biologically we are created equally. In terms of brain power, we are created equally. In terms of this common resource time, equal. The opportunities outside us, equal. Intelligence, equal. Then where is the difference? The difference is the way we use the time. The difference which makes the difference is the difference in which we invest our time. Looks like a riddle. There was a time I was teaching time management, suggesting certain tips, giving some ideas, talking about goal setting, talking about time frame, time zone, timetable, schedules, priorities. And everybody thought very good and I got a very good feedback. The stage 2, the phase 2 of the time management training was when I was introduced to the amazing concept of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which we will be discussing as we go along. Where I started discussing the link between the mind and the brain. In fact, in this episode, we are going to go a little more into that. So, we need to understand our mental program. So, we are concerned about the productivity, the deliverable of time. Now, I am in the third phase where I start coaching people, giving them the hand holding that they want, making them to understand what they are capable of and making them to discover themselves inside them. So, we need to understand what makes us to be enthusiastic, what makes us to become dull, what makes us to feel excited what makes us to feel depressed? What makes us to be very happy and what makes us to feel irritated? So, if you recall, I was talking about the power which drives us. And if you recall, the Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, I was mentioning to you in the last occasion. I hope you had a chance to think about it, to ponder over this. The question is, are you inspired? The question is, do you have something to feel inspired? Without inspiration, what can be done? Now, I am doing this episode. I am inspired to do this episode. I did some homework on this. Without the inspiration, it is something like a vehicle, a petrol vehicle without a spark plug. Or a vehicle with a spark plug which does not provide the first ignition, the inspiration. So, 
and the inspiration should be for accomplishing something great something extraordinary so that our thoughts reach out i was telling about dream as dr abdul kalam said dream is not what you get while you are sleeping but it is that thought which makes you not to sleep so once you are inspired by such a goal then you become a no limit person and all your hidden talents and skill becomes alive and then you discover yourself to be a far stronger person a far greater person than you thought yourself to be this is patanjali yoga sutra once you understand this i will take you to the next level how this patanjali yoga sutra can be applied to the way we use our time for which i want you to understand that optimization of resources is very very important optimization of resources are we using a resource for the, to the optimum level let's say that i have a factory where there are about 10 machines costly machines am i using them to the optimum level so optimizing personal productivity so it's not about time it's not about activity in fact at a particular point of time i was worried whether i am making people time nuts always thinking about time am i doing this am i doing that it's not like an industrial engineer walking with a stop clock in hand a stop watch in hand what time i get up what time i should sleep what time i should read what time i should work how many hours should i work all these things are not very 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 important but the key thing which is important is optimizing personal productivity you know one thing time has nothing to do with time a time has nothing to do with the clock a time has nothing to do with your weekly schedule time has to do what have you got to deliver that is called the personal productivity now i'm going to discuss three components which will decide your personal productivity one component is all of us know the brain i've been talking about it in many episodes brain i also said at the beginning of this episode that brain is identical to all of us regardless of your racial differences regardless of your economic differences regardless of your social differences regardless of any difference for that matter brain is identical then all the thoughts i talked about they are extraordinary thoughts and all that they are not in your brain i keep saying this brain is a place from where the various commands to take place to various parts of your body there are chemicals there are hormones depending upon the situation the particular hormone secretes if you see food your saliva secretes if you go through a sad moment in your life your tear glands secrete if you are threatened your adrenaline glands are made active when the brain is dead none of these things operate that's why i keep saying that we own a factory called the brain brain is a chemical factory brain is the hormone factory we own one other factory which is called our mind if the brain is a chemical factory mind is a thought factory researchers say that on a normal day we get about 70 to 80000 thoughts some thoughts we observe some thoughts we don't some thoughts we notice 
some thoughts we ignore some thoughts we are not even aware of some thoughts make you feel restless some thoughts make you to feel sleepless either due to fear or due to excitement so your optimizing personal productivity is a function of your brain and your mind is that all if your brain is giving command c the eyes will see but something should give command to the mind to the brain and that is mind the mind tells you something interesting taking place pay pay your attention immediately the brain is focusing there supposing you don't like a person and he waves hi your mind tells you don't wave back even though the brain is capable of activating your nerve cells your system you will decide not to respond so the brain is controlled by the mind okay if the mind is controlling the brain the next question is what controls the mind why is that the mind tells ignore that why is that the mind says that is interesting what what is that issue all of us are aware of this only thing is i am trying to put it in a structured format and that is called the intellect in india we have a very interesting name for this word intellect which is called buddhi this word buddhi is there in every indian language it is there in telugu it is there in malayalam it is there in hindi it is there in oriya you name in indian language the word buddhi is there let us understand what this buddhi is and then i'm going to link how this buddhi is influencing the mind and then i will link how the mind is influencing the brain and how the mind is directing you to various activities and how the various activities affect the quantity of your time or quality of your time and how it is influencing your personal productivity let us understand what is buddhi what is intellect buddhi or intellect is nothing but deciphering this is good this is not good i can eat it i cannot eat it i should drink this i should not drink this this person is good this person is not good i can say this to the person to this person i cannot say this to the same person i should speak this way and not this way if i do this this is the consequence if i don't do this this is the consequence you know that is called intellect that's called buddhi later on we are going to discuss about priorities what should i know, do now should i invest my time here or there that is an intellectual process an intellectual process the brain the mind are directed by the buddhi in kathopanishad there is a beautiful um, analogy how these three forces decide the quality of our life just imagine that you are on a, a hill track you are going to uti or you are going to tirupati hills you know there is a hill a temple or some um, tourist place and there are uh, roads which take you all the way up 
and the roads have hairpin bends. Just imagine. And just imagine you see a chariot driven by five horses, a chariot. And the five horses are very powerful, very, very powerful Arabian horses. And beautifully the horse slows down just before the hairpin bend, then it turns on the left and then picks up speed. In the next hairpin bend, again it slows down, takes the opposite direction and goes on and on and on, up or down. The horses are so powerful that they can overcome the uh, friction and they can go up. Beautifully it is going. If the horses, one of the horses decide, it can take you, it can take you down the valley and you are finished. Then a close observation of these horses, how is that these horses are so beautifully performing? Then you notice a rein. There is a rein and the rein pulls these horses this way and the horses turn this way. In the next hairpin bend, the rein pulls the horse this way and the horse turned this way. At a point of time, the reins pull those horses and they slow down or if necessary, they stop. So the reins are controlling the horses. Then you look into the scene once again. Then you notice the reins are held by the charioteer. There is a charioteer who is holding the reins. And he knows where to pick up speed, where to reduce the speed, where to turn left, where to turn right, where to stop. The Kathopanishad says, the charioteer is the buddhi. And the buddhi or the charioteer knows whether to turn left or right, whether to go fast or reduce speed, whether to stop or move. And he is holding the rein, you know. And the rein is the mind. And the mind and the rein is tied to the horses. The horses or the panjendriyas, the five senses. What a beautiful comparison it is. If the charioter is not intelligent, and if the charioter does not know how to climb up or down, no matter how powerful the horses are, is not going to reach the destination. I hope you will understand the link I am trying to give you between the uh, intellect, the mind and the brain. So, the whole concept of optimizing your personal productivity is an intellectual process. It is not a mechanical process. I cannot give you a set of rules, a set of uh, conditions, a set of, a set of gadgets and say if you do all these, 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 these things, the productivity of your time will be enhanced. The whole concept is based on this. And then we need to understand the brain. And how the brain is having an equation with the mind. Later on we are going to discuss, we have what is called the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain. Later on in our series of episodes, I will have enough time to talk to you on this. For the time being, I would like to say that the, all of us have two sides of the brain. First of all, I want you to understand this is called a twin or the a twin uh, brain theory. We have the right side of the brain, we have the left side of the brain. Like we use the right hand for a few activities, the left hand for a few activities. The brain also has two sides. The right side of the brain 
is to do with your ambitions in life, your goals in life, the way you fix extraordinary thoughts. The left side of the brain is responsible for a disciplined thinking, giving steps, day to day issues. When you say that I want to uh, get the Nobel Prize for peace or Nobel Prize for maths or uh, economics in about this year's time, that's triggered by the right side of the brain. The left side of the brain gives you, okay, if you want to do that, these are the things you should do. So, you are driven by the three parameters and the brain gives you command, but the mind is excited, the intellect tells you, you are capable. Now, I am going to tell you the story which I said last time, the story of the Brooklyn Bridge. Last time we ended this. The Brooklyn Bridge connects Brooklyn and Manhattan. Before this bridge was constructed, it took a lot of time, it took a lot of time to reach this place. Two people by name, John Rubling and Washington Rubling, the father and son decided, why not we construct this bridge as early as 1883. Those days, even as of date, America is a free country, free trade country, where privatization is allowed. And so they conceived this bridge. But those days, there was no computers, CAD, to keep things in a retrievable format. They applied for a lot of loans, a lot of, I mean, loans to a lot of uh, banks. And ultimately, one bank gave them the loan. They started the work. They started the work with all excitement. Unfortunately, there was a site accident within three months of starting this bridge in which John Rubling was killed. He died. And Washington Rubling, the son, had a brain injury. He cannot speak. He cannot move his body. Nothing. The only movement he had was in his little finger. That's the only movement he had. A very little movement. But Washington Rubling wanted to make the dream of his father come true. The next 13 years, he was communicating with his wife, tapping, and created a complete coding language. And he communicated the entire drawing details to his wife. And in 13 years, this bridge was completed. Everybody thought the bridge is gone because it cannot be um, conveyed because business or life itself is communication. Now, how is this relevant to what we discussed? Intellectually, you feel this is an opportunity for me to succeed. Intellectually, you believe in yourself that I am capable of extraordinary things. Your mind gives you the energy. Your brain has that right side of the brain which is emotional, the left of the brain gives you the logic and so this bridge was constructed. So I want to register in this episode that time management is not about time, it's about ambition. Once you understand this, the rest of the things we are going to discuss will fall in place. If you don't understand this, the rest of it will be a very ritualistic thing, you will ultimately come and say, I tried, I could not get it. In the next episode, I am going to discuss with you something very interesting, what I call as the seven steps to enhance personal productivity. Seven steps. What are those seven steps? Wait for a week. <laughs>